Let us begin our last week of Empowered Witness, and uh, I'm glad that you're here, and thanks for hanging with us all these four weeks. Uh, let me start us up in a word of prayer, and then we'll get going. Father, I thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunity to gather again. Thank you for all the things that are happening on our campus right now, and we pray pray for all of those from our from our preschoolers and children and students to what's happening here in this in this building for our adult ministry for ESL. God, just thank you for what this church is doing and how you're moving through our church. And we just continue to seek you and, and chase after you, Father, and, and chase after what you want us to do and you want us to be. Thank you for, for choosing to, to use us as a part of your will uh, and to accomplish your will here on earth. And we pray that, God, and we pray that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, any, uh, any stories from this last week or last couple of weeks? <clears throat> Just from opportunities that you've had maybe to share or um, anything? Yes, sir. So I've been kind of, you know, thinking about uh, my coworker. Uh, so I finally had a chance. I mean, we were able to, uh, we got like, you know, because in our room, it's so crowded. Mm -hmm. There's this privacy. So right. sometimes I take a chance, like, you know, if there's only two of us and it's quiet. So I was able to kind of you know, talk to her a little bit. And I just encourage her that, you know, she's Catholic, mm -hmm. and I just encourage her, you know, to be in the Bible, you know, to read the Word, and, you know, just to be aware of, you know, our eternal security. Mm -hmm. And she kind of like, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I've been to, you know, I've been, I've been to really, you know, get into it. And that's, you know, I encourage you to read the Bible. And hopefully I could, you know, get a chance again. Right. So that, you know, at least I, I hope that that will kind of, you know, spark something in right. her in our right. heart to very good. seek the Lord. Very good. Good job. Taking advantage of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. that's, all it, that's all it takes. What else? Any other stories? Okay. Um, had a couple of chance opportunities. Um, one with a, someone who comes from a Catholic background. We've got just a lot of questions um, about the Eucharist, about mm -hmm. icons, about... Um, Purgatory, and so some of those questions, you know, I could answer right off, um, but in some, I told her, you know, I'm going to have to get back with you because some of her questions were pretty deep, and so, uh, and and I, I share that story just to say, hey, if you get questions like that where you're like, I have no idea, then that's okay. Just say, hey, let me find out, and I'll come back to you, and and try to set a time where you say, hey, can we get back? Like, is it okay if I reach back with you tomorrow or this same time next week, just so you have that appointment with them. Um, did that, and then I, I uh, had another opportunity to share with a friend of mine um, who's going through a lot of difficult stuff, and just sort of the reminder of um, there were some relational things, and so I tied that into, um, he used the term, all my eggs in one basket, in this relationship that he was in, and, and, and I said, you know, putting all your eggs are in the wrong basket, I said, because that's going to, that's going to, that's going to fail you, you know, no matter how much this person loves you, cares about you. They're going to disappoint you. And it's going to hurt you. And so we talked about transition over to the gospel and talked about that with him. And so um, I would say he is a I would say he was a believer probably uh, when we were in high school, maybe middle school. But, you know, a lifestyle, would you say his lifestyle is, is that? Uh, no, it hasn't been that way in a long, long, long time. So just wanted to, to kind of share that. But anyway, just a couple of things. In, in my world, yes. Uh, just an example of you know we were talking about opportunities to, to get into a gospel conversation uh -huh. last week. Uh, Bob and I had the opportunity to, to go out and knock on your doors Sunday, and um, a young man opened the door that he wasn't interested, and mm -hmm. and Bob started saying, "I don't think you're." He had an accent. He said, "What's that accent?" And he he pinpointed it, and then they had a Ukraine um, connection, mm -hmm. and next time we were in his house and. Uh, you know, talking to uh, right. got into a gospel conversation. Wow. So it just one thing led to because at first he was just gonna right. shut the door. And he right. was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So just, I thought that I, I learned. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's good. Anything else? So uh, I want to read a passage of scripture, very familiar to all of you, possibly, mostly. Uh, Matthew 28, uh, 19 and 20. And actually, I'm going to go back to verse 18, where it says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. 
Verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey. This is the New Living Translation. Teach these disciples, these new disciples to obey all my commands and I have that I have given you. And be sure of this, like the way it says it. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so there's there's this phrase. And uh, so there is this phrase. Um, go and um, I, I don't and we're, we've all been called to go and, and there's something that we're supposed to go and do but I love and I read this article today and just reminded me of this um, this this phrase go is bracketed by two two really big phrases okay and one of them is all authority okay and then it says, with you always and so it's it's interesting when you when you look at that and the way this article worded i thought was pretty funny it was like how does it feel to know that god knows that you cannot do anything on your own without him right and that so you think about that and it sort of just takes this pressure off of you because it's like okay god knows i can't I, God knows I can't do this. We talked about this a little bit last week. You know, what's wrong with you? Remember what we I started asking those questions? But it's just it's interesting to me, and it's just sort of this reminder of, of, of you know, of who God is and who Christ is and what, what he has given to us, you know. And then so and this, this command to go is bracketed by these two things, right? And it's sort of like walking into, I, I remember... I remember getting into a situation in high school where uh, I was a little outnumbered with some with some people, and um, it was me and my buddy, and there was several of these other guys, and it got kind of scary for a second, and then some of our pals showed up, and there was more of us, and there were more of them. And then all of a sudden, it's like then my chest popped out. Right? <laughs> okay, you know, and it's that it's sort of this I think this idea of like you know what I don't go on my own. If I'm coming out here on my own, then yeah. This is going to be really intimidating, but, you know, when you have the authority of Christ and you have the presence of Christ going with us, that's sort of, um, it's a boost of confidence, and it's a boost of, and it's just a reminder that that God is Lord over, over all, um, and, and so we, we need to remember that. And there's a question I wanted to ask you. Why do people do things even though they're afraid to do those things? I think obedience. Okay, obedience. It's important to them. It's important to them. <clears throat> it's a courage thing too. You, you want to be courageous and yeah, you admire that. Yeah, reward. Right. There's some. There's, there's a, a reward. Sometimes yeah. it's their job. Sometimes it's their job. Yep, they have to. All of us are running one way, and they're running <laughs> the other way to go towards whatever that is. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just to overcome that fear. Just to overcome that fear. Yeah. And it's interesting that um, this whole, this confidence, and you know, you, you've heard, so what would you say is the opposite of, of, of fear? It's not a trick question. I'm just, I'm just like, Courage. Courage, right? Boldness. Right. Boldness. Confidence. Confidence. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Yeah. All those are right. But it's just this. It's like, and, and I said this in a sermon not that long ago, this, this idea of go, it's just, it's, and it's, I'm going to put this phrase up here, just enough. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in your world that's going to tell you, don't do that because, you know, you're afraid. Don't do that because you're afraid. Don't do that. Like one of the things that, that, that I did, I remember repelling. I don't know if you've ever been repelling before, but the first time I repelled was off the side of a cliff. Um, and the guy tells you, you have to, you're just going to have to fall. You're just going to have to let your weight go down. Otherwise you won't. And so. To tell you that I did that because I got all of a sudden I was brave? No, I just, okay, I got to trust. I just got to trust that when I do this, that's what's going to happen, right? That's what's going to happen. And so this go is just, hey, I've just got to trust that God's going to be with me in this. That's the only way we can go. We can't do it on our own. Right. It's it's just not possible. Right. It isn't. It isn't. Because this, again, it's not possible, and God knows that. So that's why he said, hey, all authority and I'll be with you always. Mm -hmm. And so that's 
That's so important. And it has to be just enough to you for you to take that step to say, you know what, start that conversation with your coworker. You know, continue that conversation at the door or say something to your friend or say something to your family member. And so I just kind of wanted to rem remind you that, hey, you don't go in your own authority. You don't go in your own power. You don't go it alone either. You go, you go with, you go with God and go in, in his authority. So any questions, any other thoughts about that? Okay. Well, I'm going to turn it over. Is it Mary? Mm -hmm. Mary, someone on in Mary. Okay. He's going to teach us our tool today. I am. Um, I'm Mary. And um, think about what Jimmy just said. I have a story. Um, we were, my team was out one Sunday afternoon, and we knocked on the door of this Chinese lady. And we prayed for her and we shared the gospel, and I'm not real sure she understood us. But we did the best we could. And I told, I told her that we had a Chinese church that met at our church and asked her if I could give her information to the pastor. And she said, yes. So we left and we thought, well, you know, <laughs> we're, we're not really sure of what happened here, but I sent her information to the pastor. I told her what I'd done again. And four months later, I get an email. And it says, I've been going to that Chinese church. And I have given my life to Jesus. Amen. Would you like to come and see me baptized? Oh, okay. <laughs> and that was the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And all we didn't, I mean, I didn't even know if we, we said anything to her, she'd understand, <laughs> you know? But, but God was at work. Mm -hmm. And he took it from there. Mm -hmm. So that gives me great um, confidence. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of the pressure off because I don't have to be perfect and I don't have to know all the answers. And I mean, if I say it wrong, well, I, I, you know, God is there. All right. So tonight we're going to look at our last school. Well, it's not the last one, of course. There's a ton of more. There's, a, you know, the four spiritual laws that crew uses and um, there's the um, light and dark, the two kingdoms that uh, Tom has the information for. There are probably, oh, the Evangel Cube that folks take on the mission field with them. There are just lots of ways to uh, to share the gospel with people. But tonight, I'm going to show you the one called the bridge. And this is uh, unique in that it refers to one Bible verse. This one, straight from the Romans. Um, Romans 6 23 says the way to the sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so in the beginning God created everything and it was good he said so everything was perfect and those first two people, they had a relationship with God that was exactly what they all needed. They walked and talked with God in it literally. But God had one rule. And they decided to disobey it. And ever since. People have been doing the same thing. All of us. We all choose to sin. And as a result, our relationship with God could look like that picture. So we might want to talk about what sin is. I mean, since it created this huge, impassable, vast um, chasm, abyss, and this separated us and God, and there's nothing we can do to get over here because it's just too, <laughs> too deep. And sin caused this separation while well, our disobedience did. And so what's sin? Anything that we do against God's will. Yeah. 
That's right. Well, I mean, it must be a, a pretty desperate and dire thing to have made the separation, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we must have like murdered somebody or something like that. <laughs> No, God has these rules for us for our good life. Indeed, it's important that he we keep every does. one of them, even though we don't think they're that important sometimes. Yes, Little white do. lies, no big deal. <laughs> That's right. Sin is sin is sin, right? And sometimes I think there are things that we don't think about because we can hide them, mm -hmm. like our attitude and, and the things we think about. I mean, Jesus was pretty blunt in his discussion of your attitude, right? He said, you know you're not supposed to murder, but if you hate somebody, it's the same thing. And you know you're not supposed to commit adultery, but if you lust for somebody, not your spouse, you've done the same thing. So our attitudes and our actions and our thoughts, all these things that are contrary to what God says they're seeing. Okay, so let's look at this Bible verse because it's going to tell us our predicament and what God's done about it. Okay, so our first word is wages. The word wages. What we get in return for what we've done. <laughs> That's exactly right. You might even say it's what we've earned mm -hmm. for what we've done. Um, if you've worked and you're expecting wages, you think that's what you deserve. <laughs> okay, so the wages, what we deserve of sin, we just talked about that, is death. Now, we're not talking about physical death at the end of our life. I mean, we're all going to experience that, and I guess that's part of it. But this is eternal death, like forever. This is separation from God forever and ever and ever and ever. And I don't know about you, but that's the scariest thing I can think of. Okay. And this is a great word. But... But good news is coming. The gospel always starts off with bad news. And then it goes to good news. So um, would you take a minute and find a partner and practice telling one another this part of the story? You go. There you go. <laughs> okay, we can do three ways. It won't be the first time. Well, you know the strongest thing with the bridge is the triangle. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> have to relate to the Trinity. <laughs> oh, boy. You're really, <laughs> you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing. Oh, you're, 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 you're She just wants to do what. Well, we know in the beginning, God created a and it was yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And just so, beautiful. So, and then He uh, created. That's this created is what we do. We go when He serves. So I think you created man, and man had a perfect relationship. Well, I think that's no. I mean, you can see. So he's not going to join us. No. It's good to have experience with these different uh, gospel presentations. Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna, what's gonna happen is you're going to use different ones with different people. You wouldn't talk to a teenager the same way you talk to me, for instance, if you're trying to share the gospel with me. You'd weren't use words that I'd understand, and you'd use words with a teenager that they'd understand. If you're talking to a church person, you can use scripture references and open your Bible and talk like that. But if you're talking to somebody who has no concept of God, and I know you think there aren't any that live in Texas, but that's there are because I've met them. No concept whatsoever. 
then you're going to need to camp out here for a while and help them understand who God is and what his nature is and what his character is and and the Adam and Eve story and take it from there. Um, so you're going to end up probably taking pieces of these tools and adjusting them according to who you're talking to. Also, it could be that one of them is going to just jump right out to you and you're going to say, whoa, that's what happened to me. And that's what Julia, that's how Julia prefaces um, her gospel, Sharon, often. She'll say, this is my story. Because it is. Okay, so here we are with uh, God created everybody, including those first two people who disobeyed him, and that separated us from him. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, where is my gift of God in this the gift of God is Jesus. All right, so what's a gift? Eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life. Yes, that's right. The gift is eternal life. And that, of course, is the opposite of eternal death. And it just means that the eternal life that God's given us enables us to spend forever and ever and ever with him. Okay, so what's a gift? Something someone freely gives you. I mean, something that's been offered to you. That's right. So if you give me a gift, do I have to pay for it? No. No? Do I have to earn it? No. no. Do I have to deserve it? Probably no. <laughs> Probably no. So this gift is from God, okay, and it's a gift. Mm -hmm. All right, so that gift looks like this. And as the song said on Sunday, my hope has a name. His name is Jesus. Because this gift of eternal life is through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you know the story, but not everybody does. Jesus came to earth, lived as a human person in this human body, so that he would experience what we did and be tempted like we are, but he never sinned, ever, ever. And so when he died, he could pay the debt that we owed here. And then he rose from the dead, proving he really was God, and that he had the power over sin and death, which is pretty amazing. So, that gives us the bridge by which we can leave our side of the chasm over there and have the relationship with God restored. But this is a gift. And I have two choices with that gift Julie's going to give me. I can say thank you. And I can take it and mine. Or I can say, no, I don't want that gift. So we have choices with God's gift, too. And the way that we receive this gift is two things. One is to believe. And if you're talking to folks that believe the Bible, you can go to Romans um, 10, 9 and 10, which is also part of the Roman Road. Um, and they will say the same thing I'm about to say. We need to believe that's not just like in our head, but it's really, really believe that the wages of sin is death. And that's what we deserve. Our sin is what we deserve. <laughs> the death is what we deserve for our sins. And that we can't do anything to help ourselves. We'd really like to, and we try to be good. 
we think out yonder there must be some sort of cosmic scale where you know I got my good things here and my bad things here, and if only these ones outweigh these ones, I'll be good. But it doesn't work like that. It doesn't. It can't. We can't undo that sin. And we need to believe the gospel that Jesus died in our place and rose from the dead. And that he is the only way. Wait. There's not another way. Always don't work. The second thing. Is this right here? To make Jesus our Lord. And I don't know, that always seems I don't know why that, that's hard for some people to understand, but I guess they just don't know what the words mean or something. Um, but I really like the word in the three circles for this, which is surrender, because most everybody gets that. We talked to a man this last Sunday night who did not, would not surrender. He like dug in. He said, I just, you know, I don't want to do that. He says, <laughs> this is really what he said. Um, God must be awfully arrogant if he expects me to do things his way. <laughs> and we said almost in unison, well, he's God, you know? <laughs> but he was, he was just... Anyway, that's really hard for some folks. I guess it's hard for all of us folks because us human beings are, are selfish by nature and we just don't want to give up our way of doing things. But this is, this is what the Bible says. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's what that means. You're going to do things his way and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead. You're saved. And that's what we're talking about here. So um, when we believe and surrender, we get to use this bridge. And we get to go back to that relationship with God that he created us to have in the first place because Jesus paid for our sins. And this is really good news. But you know, you don't really know where the conversation needs to go until you ask a question. You need to find out where people see themselves. Which side of this chasm are you on? Have you believed and surrendered and now have your restored relationship with, with God? Or are you still over here trying to figure out how to run fast enough to get across this chasm when you jump, you know? Uh, or whether to rappel down to the, to the bottom and see if you can climb up the other side. And then they will hopefully tell you and the conversation will start. Okay, so you and your partner now practice that second part. <laughs> All right, I think everybody's done. So thank you for uh, taking this tool and practicing, sharing that with each other. We, we're going to get out early, it looks like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But before we go, I've got a, I've got a two things, a couple of things I want to do. I want to thank everybody for coming. Some of you have been here every week, so thank you very much for that. I want to thank Jimmy for getting things started in that first training and, and, and everything that he's done along the way. Because when we started first planning this uh, several months ago, we asked him to take a primary lead role in this and because it's that important, and he readily agreed. And so we we're grateful for that. Um, yeah. Bob, thank you for doing the, the, uh, the Roman Road. Jimmy did the, the first week, we did, did the ABCs. Uh, then uh, Heather Winchester last week doing the, the three circles and uh, Mary tonight with the, with the uh, bridge. The, the bridge. So you've got to, and you, if, you, if you're listening all the way through, you're going to hear language that transcends each of these tools, right? Mm -hmm. The gospel is the gospel. Mm -hmm. Pure and simple. And uh, so uh, what I want to do before we, we do wrap up, where do we go from here? And I have to put a little seat on, on your paper, on your table, 
um, just to give you some things to think about. And you notice the first word is uh, what one you've already heard. Go. Yeah. All right. And that. Uh, so just just do it. Go. Uh, and as you have opportunities, we're 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 saying that you not only just pray for opportunities, but you pray that you see the opportunities because they're there. All right. And God will answer that prayer because that's that's what He wants us to do. All right. So. Um, I think it's also pretty important that uh, you pray for yourself, <laughs> that you have the boldness to speak the message. And when you look at Paul's letters, how many times he asked people in the churches to pray for him, to pray for boldness, to, as I ought, he had mm -hmm. said several times. So pray for that boldness. And again, I think the Lord will answer that, that prayer. And take a partner now. You know, we've heard examples even tonight where there's just one-on-one -on -one conversations. And that's fine. I've done those. I think most of us have. But it's really helpful to have a partner with you to to give you, you get strength. You feed off of each other to, to do that. So, all right. Then what happens? You share the gospel. And I can tell you how many, uh, I mentioned last week, I think, that after all these years, I shared the gospel with my brother, right? And was her name Amy? Mm -hmm. All right. She talked about sharing with her, her sister, mm -hmm. right? So when you share, I didn't get a yes. She didn't get a yes. So what do you do? Pray, pray, pray. You just keep praying. I mean, they're a loved one. You just keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Because only the Lord is going to move that heart and change that heart. So, um, and I say this, tell your friends who are prayer partners to pray for that person that's very close to you or that you've shared with. And I've got several people in my sphere who are praying for uh, my brother. Right. So keep, do that. And then um, seek opportunities to, to get together again. And there are lots of Bible stories, and I have just a, a handful here. But if you read those Bible stories, pretty much the common thread is there are people that met Jesus and responded to it. Right? And there are all kinds of stories like that. And so that might be the very thing that God would use to, to encourage their heart to move that direction. All right, what do you do when they say yes? All right, here's what I saw. When I grew up in the church, you know, I'm still growing up. <laughs> I saw a person who got saved. There, Here's a class. Go to it. That's not necessarily, it's not a bad thing, <laughs> but that's not necessarily a good way to disciple somebody. So I'm suggesting this. You take personal responsibility. I never saw any of that growing up in the church where somebody takes that person and leads them step by step in how to be, be a solid follower of Christ. So take that responsibility. And there are several ways to do that. Here's some suggestions. What you do, uh, one of the first things you want them to do is to follow the Lord in obedience in baptism. And uh, let me mention this. Uh, we've met a man just a few months ago who has been a believer for many years, as since I think he's 14 or 15, Catholic background, but he came to a personal relationship with Christ, but he only was aware of his infant baptism. And that was important to him because it helped him identify with, with Christ but when he learned about biblical baptism, he said, I want to do that. I hope he's contacted you, but <laughs> <laughs> we have a date. Maybe we have got a date. So, all right. So that's the first step in, in, in really starting that, that walk with Christ. So, uh, And then again, meeting together to help them understand uh, you know, how important it is to read the Bible. And I can tell you, other than when I was saved, I was at church. Okay, read the Bible. That's a big book. <laughs> That's a big book when you're seven years old, right? 
So, but help them work through it. And there's stories that are particularly good for new believers to where they learn what it means to be this, that, you know, other, you know, the, the, the baptism and uh, so forth. Then connecting to a group. That's critical. How many times we've met people who said, yeah, I'm, I'm a believer, but I have no group. I'm not in, in a church, nothing. And I, know, I can tell you this, I couldn't survive that way. Right? And, and why some people just get out of the habit sometimes. But they, for a new believer particularly, they need to see that's what is that's what a new believer does, is connects the body of Christ. So, so then lastly, and this is something that, uh, that hit me several years ago, a few years ago, that a disciple maker is one who makes disciples, who makes disciples, who makes disciples. And I tell you that when I was a kid growing up, that was not the deal. I said, get them saved. You're not done <laughs> until they are also making disciples, right? So, and that's fun. So, and that's what we pray for opportunities to do. And it's, you know, we're, we've got a couple that we're working with right now in that regard. So Lord is, Lord is really working in a special way. Now, let me just open it up just a few minutes. What are you going to take away from these last few weeks? What's, what jumps out? What's stuck? I mean, I wouldn't say that the first week, but again, it's a, there isn't like one thing. It's, it's a combination. There's, you know, just go where the conversation leads you, and you could end up using bits and pieces, or you may go a whole different path. But know that you have you have tools, and and again, reemphasize the day that you got Jesus with you the whole time. And neurons kind of, you know, intertwine to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of similarities, even though it's a different way of doing it. I mean, sometimes, you know, it, it's just a pattern, but sometimes, again, you can make it your own, which is, you know, if you know the person, you know, whatever is more applicable for that, then you already have all the tools that you need. And then you can, you know, like I said, make it, make it your own. I just think, remembering at all times, though, that I've got to lean on Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's, I can't branch out on my own yeah. and do it through the Holy Spirit. And I've got the tools I need. I know what to do. Just don't jump out and think that you can do it. <laughs> I wish there, I hope that there's a way I do it. In my group, there is a way we do this where we share with each other. Um, you know, conversations that we've had along the way. And so we multiply those who are saying, okay, I'm going to be praying for this person and that person and the other. And I wish we had a way to do that corporately, uh, church-wide, where there are conversations going on because people are getting saved, people are joining the church. Uh, but, you know, share something. Share with your group because they will be joining you and celebrating the, the great things and praying with you for the uh, the other things that need to be taken care of. So share that with others. We have a list in our class. One of the sweet women in there does it. And we all put down who we're praying for Yeah, and ask for prayers for each one of these people. And then at the bottom of the list, she has all the ones who have come to Christ mm. through our prayers. And every once in a while, it's in comes up and we're so excited because it's somebody we've been praying for for a long time that, and that is, list is that long of course i've got a lot of members too so yeah that's a great story <laughs> thank you for sharing that well i appreciate your taking the time to come on a cold wednesday night and uh, the spirit is warm and and vivacious let's pray we'll be dismissed lord i thank you for the uh everyone who's come tonight for uh the gospel message that you've given us to share
and thank you that uh, you go with us all the way and we can we'll, we're never without you there and so we thank you and we, we claim that promise as we go help us be faithful help us to be bold help us to to share with people we know and people we just encounter you give us opportunity we pray in Jesus name amen